We go on to the next module where we'll be talking about output functions and loss functions. Okay. The question that we are going to focus on is how to choose the loss function, but I'll show you that it's tightly coupled with the choice of the output function also. Remember that we had said that we have a spatial O function as the output function. I have not told you what that O is, and now that's what we are going to define. Now the choice of the loss function actually depends on the problem at hand. And that's exactly the question which had come up, right? That in some cases, it's okay to have sigmoid as the output function because your values are between 0 to 1. But what if there are cases where your output is not between 0 to 1, right? So it definitely depends on the choice of the, uh, of the on the problem that you're trying to solve. So we'll illustrate this with the help of two examples. And these two examples will cover a broad range of problems that you will encounter uh, if you're working in machine learning, right? So, so the first problem, is again you are given the input as movie you are using a neural network with l minus 1 hidden layers and an output layer y hat right so this is oh sorry this is a true one so you have an output layer and the output layer is going to predict the imdb rating the critics rating and the rotten tomatoes rating is that fine okay so what kind of problem is this people who have done machine learning this is a regression problem and notice that the output values that you want to predict are not bounded in by 0 and 1. They're still bounded by 1 to 10, but in general, you could imagine that there could be problems where there are no bounds at all, right? It could be a very large number. Is that clear? Okay. Now here, yi belongs to R3. So remember in all these cases, we were assuming that we just want to predict one value, but nothing stops you from predicting multiple values at the same time, right? So your output is now three dimensional. You're taking an n-dimensional input, and trying to predict three values from it, okay? Fine. The loss function should capture how much yi had devi deviates from yi, okay? So this is a valid, or maybe we corrected on this slide, yeah, okay. So this is the formula which was supposed to be there, right? So you take, you have predicted three values, and you know the true three values, you just take the difference between these, right? Is that clear? The first element of the predicted value, minus the first value, first value of the actual value and so, so on for all the three values that you want to predict, okay? Now, you have a loss function, but what should be the output function in this case? Can it be the logistic function? Yes, no? It will be bounded between 0 to 1 and you know that your output cannot be bounded between 0 to 1, okay? So in such cases, then what is a good output function to use? One option is to scale it, right? So I'll keep that aside. Why do that? It's unnatural, right? You're actually clamping it and then trying to scale it, right? So can you do something more natural than that? Just use a sum, which is linear function, right? So what we could do is we could have O as a linear function. So what that means is, again, remember that this is A of L, okay? And I know all the computations that have happened so far. Uh, linear transformation, non-linear, linear, non-linear, non and then again, linear. So I've computed A of L. From that, I want to compute the final output, right? So I could just have it as a linear function of the input, which is A of L in this case. Does it make sense? How many of you feel it makes sense? Okay, why? Because now it's no longer bounded, right? You could, this linear transformation, your weights could be adjusted in any way to get a value whatever you want, right? Whether you want it between 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 or 1 to 1000, these weights could be adjusted to do that, right? So at least you're not bounding it and it is free to learn what's the range. From the data, it should be able to learn that how should you adjust these Ws so that you get the desired range. Now, tell me, why would it not happen that you learn Ws which start predicting values like 1000, 10,000 and so on in this particular case where your input is bounded by 1 to 10? or the, sorry, your output is bounded between 1 to 10. Why would it happen? I, I, this is my uh, uh, argument and you prove me wrong, right? I would say that, oh, if you have chosen a linear transformation which is not bounded, I, the network could learn weights which start producing a rating of 10,000, 20,000 and so on because it's not bounded, right? But you know that that's wrong because the ratings can only be between 1 to 10. So why would that not happen? Because you're minimizing the loss function, right? So if you start predicting values like 10,000, 
when your actual rating was 9, then you'll have a 10,000 minus 9 the whole squared loss. That's a very high loss. So it'll start moving you away from that configuration, right? So the training is always guided by the objective function. So if your training happens well, it will try to prevent this, right? Okay. Now suppose, uh, let's take a simple thing, right? That uh, you are given a, a same ball example for probability, right? So you're given an urn which has balls of three colors, say black, white, and yellow, okay? And you have put the balls in that. So you know that the true probability distribution is actually 0 0.35, 0 0.25, and 0 0.4, right? For red, uh, black, and white. Okay, this is the true probability distribution. You have put say thousands of balls in and on. Okay, now what you do is, you just allow me to peep into the urn or you allow me to take some samples from there. You tell me, okay, take these 100 samples and you ask me, tell me what this probability is, right? So this is the true probability that you know is true, right? Because you know it because you have estimated it. Okay, now you just give me a small sample from there and ask me to estimate it. And based on that, I actually estimate this okay so there was a true probability distribution and an estimated probability distribution now i want to find out how wrong i went right afterwards you tell me the answer you tell me that this is what the true was and this is what you predicted now i want a way of computing how wrong i was right so how do i do that you already know this and these are two vectors what can i do you could just do the this is valid anything wrong with this in principle no right you could just treat these as any two vectors you have a true value you have a predicted value you just take the squared error difference between them right but you know this is a probability distribution right so you should be able to do something better than this you know this is a special quantity this is not just any number that you are predicting you're trying to predict a distribution so you should be able to do something better than that right so that's what we want to see how to do something better than this okay that's what our quest is okay now again while we are at this right i also want to make a because this is something people don't immediately understand so i just want to make a case for something else i'll just do that okay now suppose there's this ipl okay and there are four teams in the semi final okay let's call them a b C and D. Okay. Now I was not in town after the semi-final, so I just know the results up to semi-final, and then the finals also happen, and one of these teams wins. Let's call it the B team, right? The B team wins. Can you express this in terms of probability? Can you express this in terms of a distribution? What do you mean by zero and one? B has one, so it's a certain event because it has one now. So what's going to be the distribution? 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So this event happens with 100% probability, okay? Now the same case, can you, okay, so now let's do the same thing, right? As I said, I was not in town, right? And you asked me, tell me which team would win, right? So I know these four teams have qualified in the semifinals, and I know who the players are and so on, and with my limited knowledge of cricket, I'll predict something, right? So say I predict this. Okay, can you again tell me how wrong I was? You know what the true label is, and you know what I predicted. You can tell me how wrong I was? Okay, so the case which I'm trying to make is that even if the event is certain, you can still write it as a probability distribution where all the mass is allocated to the correct output, right? Can you relate this to a classification problem? When you see training data, you have already observed it. Suppose there were four classes possible, apple, orange, mango, and banana. If you've seen it's apple, and if I ask you what's the distribution, what will you tell me? Zero, one, zero, zero, right? You'll express it as this one hot vector, where all the probability mass is concentrated on the guy which is correct, right? So even certain events, events which happen with certainty, you can write them as a distribution, right? Where all the mass is allocated on the true label, right? So that's how all classification problems, when you're dealing with multi-class classification problems, it's often the case that you will write it as this, that your true label is given to you in this format. There were four possible events, four possible classes, or k possible classes, out of which only one is correct, right? 
and then you make a prediction and you want to now find out how different was your prediction from the true label. Is that fine? You get the setup how this relates to a classification problem and this is that's why this is of interest to us. Okay. Okay. So this, uh, so we'll see this soon. Uh, now the next thing that we need is, uh, how many of you know what is entropy? Forget about cross, just entropy. Okay. That's why I left two slides intentionally blank. Okay. So, okay. So now let's see where do I go with entropy. Okay. How many of you know what is expectation? Please. Okay. Good. Fine. So again, the same thing. Now I knew that this was the distribution, which I think I'm into gambling. I'm not, but I'm into gambling and I try to bet on these teams, right? And I bet some amount on each of these. Can you tell me what's the expected reward that I'll get? No, what am I saying? Okay. Uh, wait, suppose this is the case that if team A wins, I get 10 K rupees or my net profit is 10 K rupees. If team B wins, my net profit is 20 K rupees and C and D so on, right? You get the setup for every event. There is an associated value with it. This is the value of event A winning, B winning, C winning and D winning, right? So the net profit in each of these cases. So what's my expected net profit? No, no, give me a formula. I don't demand much like Huh? Sigma over all events, right? How many events do I have here? Four, right? So rather I should say I equal to A, B, C, D, right? Probability of I multiplied by the value associated with that event, right? So this is how you compute expectation. Okay. Everyone gets this. Okay. So now suppose, uh, uh, say I'm, uh, I'm doing this, right? Uh, there are suppose four symbols. I don't know what I'm teaching. Okay. So, so and I'm trying to communicate this from a source to a destination. Okay. And now suppose the, these are the four symbols that I give. And if these, one of these symbols is say with probability one, and if I transmit it, what's the information that this guy gets? So this is assume that A is that sun is going to rise today. If I tell you this when you're sleeping in the night, what will you tell me? Yeah, so yeah. Okay. So, so basically you're not gaining any information, right? Because it's a certain event, you know, this is going to happen, right? Now, one of these events, suppose I'm going to say that this, there's going to be a cyclone tomorrow morning. What's the probability of a cyclone happening? In Chennai, almost one, but still, it's, it's a very rare event, right? So if I tell you something which is very rare, that message has a very high information content, right? So an event which has a very high probability has a very low information content and an event which has a very low probability has a very high information content, right? So you can measure the information content of an event Okay. So, so the point is that what you can have is that the information content of an event, you can write it as how many of you get this? How many of you have seen this before? Okay. All of you have seen this, right? So this is the value associated with an event. Okay. Now, can you tell me what is the expected information content? For every event now, I've given you the value associated with that event. So what's the expected uh, information content? Summation P of I into information content of I and this like, and this is of course log, right? So it would be, so what is this called? This is called the entropy. Okay. Now what is cross entropy? How many distributions are you dealing with here? One, which is the P distribution, which tells you how likely these messages were. And based on that, you're trying to calculate the entropy of this uh, situation, right? So now what is cross entropy? You have a true distribution. Say you have a predicted distribution. Okay. This is what you predicted. So that means according to your predictions, the information content of every event is going to be log of QI because that's what you predicted, right? 
but what are the actual probabilities with, with these which which these events are going to occur pi's right so then the expectation has to be computed over pi's right so then what you will have is summation pi log qi so this is what you estimated the information content to be but the actual events are going to happen with this probability right so this is your value associated with the event and this is the actual probability of the event right so this quantity is known as the cross entropy is it clear okay and this is a way of measuring when would this be uh, in when would this be minimized when both are same so that means if your prediction is very close to your true distribution this quantity will be low minimized actually so that's what you wanted actually you wanted to predict some distributions in all of these cases and you wanted a measure which tells you that this prediction was good and what's the definition of good it's as close to the correct value so cross entropy gives you a measure of telling how close a predicted distribution is to a true distribution is that clear okay so now instead of using the squared error which was actually pi minus qi right so pi was my true distribution and qi was my predicted distribution i can use cross entropy which is given by this formula and it does the same thing it gives me a principled way of measuring how close my predicted distribution is to my true distribution do you get this so now uh, so this was for whatever we have done so far right till this point this was for regression right now i wanted to enter into classification for which i have built this setup of how to take the difference between two distributions right so now let us consider this problem where we have this situation right which is a classification situation that you are given four possible classes out of which one is the correct class now this is the true data given to you this is the true distribution all the probability mass is focused on one of these classes okay now we want to given an image classify this into one of k classes okay we we could again use a squared error loss but since we are dealing with probability distributions here we want to use something special so before we get to what the special is going to be what do i first need to tell you in the earlier case my output was not bounded was it also dependent was there any condition on if the imdb rating is something the critics rating should be something else or the rt the rotten tomatoes rating should be something else no now in this case is there a tightly coupled behavior between the outputs why because they should sum to one we are trying to predict a probability distribution so the sum should be one right so i need an output function which ensures this you get the setup okay now we should ensure that y hat is also a probability distribution whatever we are predicting is also a distribution okay so now can i use a sigmoid function yes it will give me values between 0 to 1 and probabilities are between 0 to 1 but the sum would not be 1 so sigmoid is ruled out okay so what we use is something known as the softmax function how many of you have seen this before please everyone raise your hands otherwise you will get zero on the assignment okay fine so what does this what does this function actually do let's look at this function right so here you had al which was say al1 al2 al3 right suppose we had three classes okay so from here i actually want to go to hl or rather i going to want to go to y hat right which is going to consider y hat 1 y hat 2 y hat 3 right it's going to give me probability of each of the three classes let's assume there are only three classes right so now what this function does is how is it going to predict y1 hat suppose these values were 10 minus 20 and 30 so what's going to be y1 hat it's going to be e raised to 10 divided by e raised to 10 plus e raised to minus 20 plus e raised to 30 so now you can see how the output is computed computed from each of these values right so why did we do this e raised to stuff why couldn't i have just taken 10 plus minus 20 plus 30 divided by the sum because we have negative values right so once we take the exponent even the negative values become positive right 
So that's why we need the softmax function. I hope all of you wrote this in your assignment. They did? Okay, fine. So you get this? We have a different output function now and this output function, does it make sense? Okay, it gives us a probability distribution now. The summation would be one and each of these values would be between zero to one. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay. And now that we have ensured that y and y hat both are distributions, what is the objective function that we are going to use? Cross entropy. How many of you are convinced it's cost entropy? We have two distributions now. We saw that a principal way of computing the difference between two distributions is the cross entropy. So we'll use the cross entropy. Now can you tell me something about this sum? There's something special about this sum. What are these? The true values. And these are the predicted values. Okay. What is so special about this sum? How many terms are there in this summation? K. As many as the number of classes. In this case, four. How many of those terms will go to zero? all but one, right? Except for the correct class, everything else will go to zero. So this just boils down to the following loss function. That if L is the true class, right? For that class, YC is going to be one, it is going to be zero for everything else, right? That's exactly what this vector tells you. Only that term will remain. So we're actually trying to minimize this quantity. Okay? Uh, let's see. So for classification problems, this is your objective function. You either minimize the negative log of y hat L or you can say you are maximizing this thing. Okay. Now what is this quantity y hat L? No. It's the it's the predicted probability of the correct event. Right? Okay. So this is a probability. Okay. Now wait. Uh, this is an important question. So you have y hat L here. And this is a function of, I mean, this optimization problem is with respect to theta. Is this a well-formed objective function? Does y hat L actually depend on theta? Yes, it does, right? So theta, because y hat L is a function of all these things, right? Everything here, and then a log on top of that, right? So it is actually a function of all your parameters. So this is a properly set objective function. We are trying to minimize or maximize with respect to theta, okay? And you told me that y hat L is actually the probability of the, the predicted probability of the correct class, okay? Hence, this quantity is also known as the ML class, pattern recognition class, log dash of the data. You're all good at filling the blanks, okay? So, is the probability of the x belonging to the lth class and then hence y hat l because it's the probability, it's the likelihood of, it's called as the log likelihood of the data, log likelihood, okay? Is that clear? Okay, so what have we done so far? We started with a feed forward neural network. Uh, we defined the hidden layers and the input layers and the weights and the biases. We kept a provision for the output layer to be something special. Then we went to two classic problems. One is regression and the other is classification. In regression, we wanted to predict values of all sorts of ranges, right? So we decided to use a linear layer there so that there is no bound on the values that you can predict. And your objective function should take care of where the bound lies. It should not allow values which are way off from the true values, right? And that's why we use the squared error function there. The other problem that we looked at was classification where we saw that the label actually can be treated as a distribution where all the mass is focused on the true label and zero everywhere. And our job is then again to predict a distribution. So we are given the true distribution and we predict another distribution. So at the output again, we want something special in this case, which is a distribution. So to ensure that we use a spatial function, which is called the, who said sigmoid? Softmax function. Okay. Right? Fine. And then we got a prediction, which is a probability distribution. And then how did we find what was the objective function? What's the difference between the true and the predicted? The cross entropy, right? So we use cross entropy as the objective function. And then with some simplification, we realized that it just boils down to maximize the log of the probability of the true class, or rather log of the predicted probability of the true class. Okay. So now let's look at the summary. So if your outputs are real values, what is your output activation going to be? 
linear. What's the loss function going to be? Squared error. Okay, okay. If your output is a distribution, what's the output function going to be? Softmax, okay. What is this loss function? Squared error. Cross entropy, right? Now this grid, right, actually takes care of a wide range of problems that you will see, right? Think of any examples that I've been giving you so far, movie prediction or sentiment prediction or image classification or anything, all of that you can fit into this framework, right? And so if you know these two loss functions, how to deal with them, then you can deal with a large class of problems that you're going to deal with, okay? And for the rest of this lecture, which will happen tomorrow, we're going to focus on this. Now this particular output function and this particular loss function how do we compute? I have a loss function. What am I going to compute now? A gradient with respect to all the parameters. So this is what we are going to focus on, right? So we have seen the loss function in detail. We have seen that the loss function is tightly coupled with the output function. Now we are all set that given this loss function, how do we start computing gradients of this loss function?